gonna need a bigger boat. <laughs> oh, that was a bit much, that one. <laughs> you have Jesus no Christ. idea where he has been. I'm Tom Campbell from Cultaholic.com, joined by the classic YouTube algorithm, Adam Pacitti. Don't get me started. <laughs> <laughs> started already, mate. Here's some news. A WWE champion has been removed from his crown jewel match. Cain Velasquez is avoiding surgery. We'll tell you more about this in a minute. And which WWE superstars are refusing to be a part of WWE shows in Saudi Arabia. Terrible feeling that it's about to come crashing down and hurt inside. Often. Mm hmm In unrelated news, Seth Rollins <laughs> has been removed from his one of his matches at WWE Crown Jewel. Here's Adam Pacitti with the pickup on this. <laughs> right, so Seth Rollins was originally scheduled for two matches at Crown Jewel. Uh, the first being The Fiend versus Seth Rollins in a Fool's Count Anywhere match, but also he was the captain of Team Hogan, who of course are taking on Team Flair. If you're not familiar with those teams, I'll quickly run them down now as I look at my notes, because I can't remember all of them. It's a killer's it was, row. It was going to be Seth, Rusev, Ricochet on Team Hogan, and then on Flair's side, you've got Randy Orton, the captain, Baron Corbin, Bobby Lashley, and Nakamura had been added to that. So there were the four announced on one, three on the other. However, Team Hogan are now seemingly just down to two. It's just Rusev and Ricochet on there now. So who's going to step up to the challenge? Oh, if only there was some feather boa wearing oh. old racist or something. Or... <laughs> You talking about my neighbour Keith again? <laughs> is he up to Saudi Arabia? Okay, let's just let's dive straight into this. There is wild speculation that Hulk Hogan's going to wrestle a match again. Big time. Woo! I'm more worried about Flair. Yeah. Was that your Flair there? Uh, oh! That was that was that was an out that was a sharp outtake of breath. Um, yeah, but it could also have been a Flair who him, <laughs> himself these days is a sharp outtake of breath. I, I mean, I, I, we talked about this yesterday, so I don't want to repeat ourselves too much, but if you're going to have a match involving Hogan, involving Flair, then a 5-on-5 five five is the safest way to do it because you can do the big spots and nothing else, and nobody's going to break any bones, probably. It actually makes sense to take Seth Rollins out of this match because oh. I, I felt there was a bit of a juxtaposition, and we mentioned this on the news podcast this morning, there was, uh, there was a bit of a juxtaposition between being in this sort of gritty falls count anywhere match against your heated rival, and then, oh, now you're in some team competition competition a bit later on. Didn't really feel right to have Seth in that match as well. Agreed. If it's not Hogan and it's not Flair, who well no, if it's not Hogan in fact on this in this case, who should be the captain of Team Hogan? Well it if you look at SmackDown tonight where we have got uh, Shinsuke Nakamura versus Roman Reigns I'd say put Roman Reigns on Team Hogan. Yeah, I agree. That makes sense. I think that's, yeah, that's, that's the right you know, answer. He is a real American and he will fight for the rights of every man, except he's a bit Samoan, but they're sometimes classed as American, depending on if they're fighting somebody from Canada. Or geography or. with Tom Campbell. <laughs> I got a D in geography. <laughs> yeah, I was thunk it. awful. Uh, I, keep, I keep thinking I'm in Wickham. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I mean, I think Roman Reigns would make sense to go on that team. Yeah, uh, I, agree. I think in terms of other people, who Hogan could buddy up with in there. I'm looking at the other members of, of, of the members of Team Flair, looking for like some semblance of feud. Uh, I would eat, I'd Kofi Kingston. Just to call back to the Randy stuff. Yeah. Corbin, maybe Gable. Is Shorty the, the G. Of, yeah. Uh, Lashley has got Rusev there. Yeah, Nakamura and Roman. That makes sense, I think. We'll see. Drew, I think it... Rick, Rome, Short. Hogan. Catchy, there's a hashtag for you. <laughs> oh, I didn't catch it, but whatever it is, get that nonsense make it trending. AE <laughs> dub! AE dub! Not my words, the words of Yorkshire audio producers. And the words. Yes, that was actually quite clever. Thank you, mate. For once. <laughs> and the words of the crowd and all elite wrestling's dynamite on Wednesday night. Another good week. For Cody and the lads, Adam Pajita. Totally. They are down 4,000 viewers, which is, is nothing in week-to-week -week TV, uh, dropping from 1 million and 18,000 to 1 million and 14,000. However, things aren't so bright and sunny in Camp Triple H, with NXT dropping 10% from around, I guess, a 780,000-ish uh, to 712,000. Now, these are still good figures in, in the grand scheme of things, you know? Mm, yeah. They are still, they're still good figures. I think that the only minor cause for concern, I don't think there's, there's anybody like 
you know, in, in, in panic stations right now because the, the AEW figure, three weeks in and you're still over a million? That's, that's gangbusters. That's mm -hmm. brilliant. I was expecting AEW to, to sink quite a bit this week. I really was. Not, not, not out of nastiness. I just think like view, viewing habits now. They, but they've, you know what? They've, they've played it well. They've held. I'm I'm very surprised. Again, not not in a in a dickish way to AEW. Uh, I wasn't expecting NXT to drop to that number. No. I thought they were now starting to. And it's like you see this in sort of TV and radio figures that when there's a big changing of the guard, uh, there is uh, there's a spike initially out of intrigue. Then you get a dip, and then you start to sort of plateau. Yeah. And uh, and and if AEW is plateauing like either side of a million, that's. That's incredible. That's a great result. It, NXT could probably do maybe a hundred thousand more. <laughs> yeah, I'd say if, if you, you know, if, I just I feel like they would feel. I don't, again, it's not. I don't think it's it's panic stations at all. But I certainly think they'd feel a bit more comfortable it, under, in, under people under thousand people more. In the analysis of this data, it's often said that weeks two and three are some of the most important to look at because, as you say, everybody's watching for week one, yeah. and it's whether you can maintain that interest in future weeks. So for NXT to be dropping that much does suggest that maybe uh, th their opening show, strong, strong viewing figures as well, mm -hmm. not as strong as they would have liked, not as strong as AEW's also. Uh, but with the amount of the, just the big names on that card and the huge matches that were announced, it feels like maybe people were disappointed that they weren't going to maintain that level of big every single week. Maybe it's people tuning in second week and thinking, oh, okay, this isn't what it was last I week. I mean, the show, NXT was still a, a strong show. It wasn't, I agree. Like, it wasn't marquee matches but it and you kind of knew who was going over and everything but it still felt like a great show um mm -hmm. but it's I, not as big as week one no and maybe that's where no you're chance. losing some new viewers aew have, have slightly changed their game as well i'm fascinated to to, to cross examine stuff like this like aew dynamite my big bone of contention when i was watching aew dynamite was the first seven minutes would be JR, Shivani and Excalibur running down every single match in great depth. Then you'd have a promo package, which is like, which was, you know, a being the elite style promo package. And by about eight, nine, maybe 10 minutes in, you the bell would sound on a match. Mm -hmm. This week, 25 seconds. You can tell Jim Ross has been told to speed it up. 25 seconds in, boom, they're so cal uncensored and the, the, off to the races we go. You can tell they've changed that up a little bit and I like little touches like that. Uh, a, one observation from a lot of people as well is that um, NXT to the casual fan, according to several sources, looks small time in comparison. Oh, which, yeah, it, which it absolutely does, because that's the nature of NXT. They can't compete with AEW's production um, in full sale. I think that's that's the major issue there. I think they do have to get out of there if they're going to look big time. If they're going to, if they want to compete on that level and make it feel like a bigger offering, they need to start hitting those arenas. And yeah. When AEW are running eight to twelve thousand seater arenas, and then NXT are in full sale, I mean, I believe the frustrations there with NXT staff. They know that the issue's there. Uh, and they've certainly got, they'll invest. If they, if they go around the country working arenas, then definitely they will invest. Can they draw those numbers? That's the concern because if, if you've got like episodes of SmackDown, which, which in theory feature your big stars and you're playing to like empty sides of a venue, like, can NXT draw? Like, NXT, like the whole reason that NXT started doing big arenas so relatively quickly. You know, with with Brooklyn, I think it was Takeover Brooklyn, which mm -hmm. was going to be in a smaller venue down the road from SummerSlam, and they went, "Well, now let's play the bigger one because we're selling so many tickets." You know, and then that place was packed out. It was great. Could you do that every single week with NXT? I don't know. I don't I, and I'm a, and I'm a big NXT fan, and uh, I know that we get we get lambasted with being you know either side of the fence. I love both brands. I'm an NXT boy. That's my graded. Cho uh, weapon of choice, but I feel like, yeah, there is limitations with full sale. But then personally, I really like full sale. I, I like, I like the, the smaller intimacy. venue. I agree. That's why I like NWA power. I don't think it works on TV. No. I think it works as a WWE Network exclusive show. Fans know what they're getting, but not on TV. I, I think it's different. It'll be interesting to see also if AEW can maintain their attendances moving forward. They're the hot new thing mm. at the moment. Can that continue? We'll see. Oh, exciting times on a Wednesday night. Who's that with the knee brace wearing jeans underneath the knee brace? Who's that over there hanging out with Rey Mysterio? Who's that? Oh, that's
That's got to be Kane! That's got to be Kane! Kane Velasquez in the news today. Uh, you may have noticed when he first hobbled out on SmackDown, he looks a little bit broken. He has a bad knee, and uh, that needs to get sorted, doesn't it, Adam Pacitti? That's right, but he's apparently uh, avoiding surgery. He's been told that he needs surgery. However, he's going to go uh, undergo stem cell treatment, which is the hot new thing. Lots of wrestlers doing it. I saw Kurt Angle doing it the other day. That's right. one of the hot new things. It's stem a hot, cell it's treatment. It's been around for hey, a while. Hey, hey, kids, you tried stem cell treatment? <laughs> it's like Pokemon Go, but with bits of your body. You're so down with it. I'm so down with the kids. It's unreal. So, yeah, they, they, I guess the, the question that this poses is what does this mean for the crown jewel title match with Cain Velasquez? Oh, it's going to happen. No, no, no. I'm not, I'm not questioning whether <laughs> it's going to happen or not. That's definitely going to happen. I think it means they'll probably not put the belt on him if his health is up in the air. I think it's more likely that Brock Lesnar is retaining there. Yeah, I, I would imagine so. He's Because he's, he's keen to work a full-time schedule with WWE. Which but, is admirable. Which I like I, that. Yeah, and more, than, more than be said for Brock, I guess. <laughs> more for Lesnar. Uh, which, so he, but he's aware that if he has surgery, it's going to take him out of the game for quite a while. Uh, so if he's going to go through stem cell to make him a bit more comfortable, make it make it manageable, make it palatable, then that's great. Um, Brian Cage, Rey Mysterio, Kurt Angle, as you said, Kevin Nash, Rob Van Dam, uh, Johnny Nitro, Johnny Mundo, Johnny Stem Cell, uh, all <laughs> have had like very successful bouts of stem cell treatment, mm -hmm. and it could be exactly what Velasquez needs if he wants to have a healthy life in WWE. So Cain Velasquez will definitely be in Saudi Arabia. Actually, as we speak right now, he is spending every day when he's not getting stem cell treatment in the performance center. Perfect. He is there until they fly out, essentially, learning to, I don't know, hip toss, I guess. No, no that's <laughs> not fair. He can, he's the triple, he, he can, can go, wrestle. he can go. The man has show and he can go, but he's learning the WWE way, which is why he's there till they fly out. Uh, but there are a few notable names that aren't flying out at all, Adam Pacitti. That's right, these are two that have refused to go in the past. They're high enough up on the card that they can go, nah, I don't really fancy it. <laughs> like, there are other people that I'm sure have uh, ethical issues with going, but maybe aren't in the same position. The first being Kevin Owens will not be there. Uh, he won't be competing. And the other, Daniel Bryan. Two guys who have refused to work before in Saudi Arabia. Uh, fine, I, I mean, good for them that they can that they're in the position that they, they can say, yeah, I don't, don't really fancy it. Yeah, and you know what? Like, it's like one of those things where the, the, the card is quite full and I think that I think Daniel Bryan did, did one before he did the Greatest Royal Rumble. Yeah, he lasted over an hour, didn't he? God, that was he was that was actually a great performance by Daniel Bryan in that Rumble. Um, so he's. I was, yeah. He, well, yeah, he, he went doesn't count really in the lineage distance. of the Royal Rumble. I should point uh, out. I'll have you know, <laughs> Braun Strowman is defending. He is the most fightingest, greatest Royal Rumble champion I have ever seen. Uh, but Sami Zayn, uh, as a result of his ethnicity, is not allowed to work any of these shows. Yeah. Either, so he is not scheduled for it, and I know that Sammy and Kevin Owens are really close friends, so there's probably some solidarity there. I think same with Daniel Bryan. Uh, this is despite the fact, of course, Shinsuke Nakamura, who is his charge at the moment, will be there. But I'm guessing Ric Flair will play the Sami Zayn role for for Shin. Yeah, come Crown Jewel, nailing halluva kicks, and I reckon <laughs> Ric Flair has got a good scar dance and a halluva kick and a halloumi kick. I think I want to see that. It would look like kick. a halloumi kick if Ric Flair did it. He does look like a big puddle of cheese, doesn't he? <laughs> he certainly does. We uh, close you. the video. <laughs> Have a great weekend. Thanks for watching. Let us know what you think in the comments down below. You can follow us on Twitter at Cultaholic. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Cultaholic. If you enjoy what we do here at Cultaholic, you can pledge to us on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash Cultaholic. And most importantly, don't forget to hit subscribe and join us.